It's the Roy Rogers Show. Happy trails to you. It's nice to meet again. Happy trails to you. Until the journey's end. Oh, Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat, brings you the Roy Rogers Show. Transcribed on the Double R Bar Ranch with Pat Brady and the Queen of the West, Dale Evans. Happy trails to you. Time to ride again. And here he is, in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. Here's my good word for today. It's about a honey of a new cereal, Post Sugar Crisp. And it's my hunch you'll like it just as much as we do out here at the Double R Bar Ranch. You see, Post Sugar Crisp is just downright good eating. And it's good so many different ways. Try it real soon, won't you? And now, here's our story. It's almost midnight in a small western prison. There are footsteps in a corridor. A flashlight pokes its beam into each of the iron-barred cells. The guard finishes his tour of inspection and reports that all prisoners are accounted for. And in the prison yard, a large tarpaulin-covered supply truck moves out as the heavy gates open. Well, Louis... We spent a couple of months in that confounded prison, but we're out of it now. Where are we going, Mr. Corky? We'll take over this truck pretty soon and head for Paradise Valley. Oh, but someone might recognize us. I ain't been seen without a full beard for better than 40 years now. But as soon as I can steal a pair of scissors and a razor, my cheeks will be as smooth as the top of your head. Gosh, what'll you look like, Mr. Corky? (laughs) Probably look like an old turnip. (laughs) An old turnip with a southern accent. Well, why are we going back to Paradise Valley? Why don't we try someplace new? Now, for one thing, we got a foolproof hideout in Boulder Canyon. For two things, I always wanted to play my fiddle at a New Year's Eve square dance. Mm-hmm. And for three things, I got to get even with that Roy Rogers fella. If it hadn't been for him, you and me had never had to register at that confounded iron hotel. Mm-hmm. Sure was. A fellow has to be in pretty good shape to get through that dance without being plumb windy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Roy. I'm not scarcely winded at all. <laughs> Just having a little trouble getting my breath. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Pat, that old fiddle player you dug up is a whiz bang. He certainly is. Boy, he makes that violin talk. Yeah. He looks like an old turnip, but he's a mighty fine fiddler. Say, hey, what's his name, Pat? It's uh, Floater Lee. He says his ancestors migrated here from... Virginia, right after the Civil War. I never heard of a Lee family in the valley. Well, he says he lives way down at the southern end. Are you about ready to call a square dance, Roy? Sure, I'd like to. Time for only about one more before midnight. Well, come on up then. I'll introduce you to Floater. You know, he was telling me he was mighty anxious to have you call a number so as to get all the folks a dance. (laughs) All right, come on, let's go. Say, aren't you going to ask to be my partner this time, Pat? Why, sure, Dale. I've been waiting to get rid of Roy so as I could have a chance. Uh, howdy there, Mr. Brady. Uh, you all having a good time? Yeah, we all sure are. Floater, I want you to meet my friend, Roy Rogers. He'd like to call the next dance. Why, Mr. Rogers, sir, this is indeed a pleasure. Well, thank you. We're sure getting a big kick out of your playing. Mr. Lee, this is Miss Evans. Always a pleasure to meet a beautiful lady. They don't raise them any prettier than you in Virginia. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Hey, uh, how about Tennessee Wagner Floater? Do you know that one? That is, in my opinion, the finest square dance tune ever written. Uh, I'll give you my special introduction to it, and away we go. Come on, Pat. Let's get in right at the very start. I'm with you, Dale. See you later, Roy. All right, everybody, grab your partners for an old-time square dance and get out on the floor. We need about two more couples over there on that side. Everybody ready? Let her go, Floater. All 
join hands and circle to the south, a little in sunshine in your mouth. Lose your host, the Grand Trail, back with the lady in the lead. Swing your part a little bit hard and Al, the man you left in your own backyard. Al, the man you left in the right, your part go right and left in a hurry up, boys, and don't be slow and sit your wheel and mix your dough and save a heel and pat your toe. You meet your partner and promenade home. First couple out to the right with a lady around a lady and a jump so low with a lady around a jet and a jet don't go. I'll swing them in the center with a two fur whirl and lead them up to you and your buckle up four. Change the right hand lady with the left hand round. The partner by the right as she comes round with a hip be long and a pop for a stump with a hole in the floor and everybody jump. Circle balance lead to the next and chase a rabbit two sets whirl. Chase that pretty girl around the world. Now that possum, now the coon, and now that big boy around that room will swing him in the center with a two fire whirl and lead him up to any buckle up four. Change your right hand, lady, with the left hand round, the pointer with the right as she comes round. Way it down, you're not very far off, but she's bird died with a hoop and call. Circle balance, lead to the neck of the bird in the cage in the three wheel pen. Bird hop out and the crow hop in, you circle four, you're gone again, and change your right hand, lady, with the left hand round, the pointer with the right as she comes round. Circle balance, feet to the next, you chase the rabbit, chase that squirrel, chase that pretty girl around the world. Now the possum, now the coon, and now that big boy around that room, I'll swing him in the center with a two car whirl, and I need him up to two, and if I can look for Change your right hand, lady, for the left hand round, the pointer for the right as she comes round. Circle balance to your homes, and everybody swing, swing your part a little bit hard, and the element left in your backyard. Tell the man you left and right, your part will right and left and hurry up for you. Don't be slow, there, chicken in a red pan picking up Go, You meet your part and walk forward. You know where and I don't care. Go park that pretty girl in the chair. That falls your own. Mr. Rogers, it's yeah. a half minute till midnight before the folks leave the floor. Why don't we have them all gather around and sing Old Lang Syne? It's a great idea, Floater. The crowd is sure all out here now. Say, folks, it's just a couple of seconds until New Year. Uh, let's all gather around and sing it in, huh? Yeah. Good idea. Well, start us off, fellas. Yeah. Key of F, boys. Here we go. Should all the acquaintance be or not? Dale, it was certainly a wonderful party. It certainly was, Roy. The best one ever. I'll run and get my coat while you get your hat and guns out of the men's cloakroom. Uh, Pat's getting mine for me. I'll be saying goodnight to some of the people and meet you right here. Gee, it's too bad old Mr. Lee had to leave before the last dance. Yeah, the band didn't sound half as good without him. But he said he had a long trip and he only stays up past midnight once a year. <laughs> he was all kinds of fun. See you in a minute, Roy. All right. Hey, Roy? Roy? Yeah? Some muzzler's playing a joke on us. There ain't a gun holster or a gun left in the cloakroom. What's that? Well, the deputy was in there all night, wasn't he? Well, he came out to watch you call a square dance and stayed to sing old Lang Syne with all of us. Well, sir, we started out to have a happy new year, and we're going to. As soon as we locate about 40 pairs of 45. Meet Roy's little friends, Handy Dandy Candy. The three honey bears you see on the front of every Sugar Crisp package. Hi, what's new? What's new? Post Sugar Crisp. Right. Sugar Crisp is the cereal treat that's fun to eat. And our three Sugar Crisp bears can tell you why. Sure. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy, right out of the box. Yes. Sugar Crisp is so good because it's nourishing puffed wheat with a candy-like coating of sugar and honey. And Sugar Crisp is just sweet enough. You don't need sugar. Just add milk or cream and have a feast for breakfast. And Sugar Crisp is ideal for snacks. Quick and easy to fix whenever you're hungry. Or eat it right out of the package like candy. It's good. And it gives you quick food energy. So listen to the three little Sugar Crisp bears who say, Add a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post sugar crisp. 
Look for genuine Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on front. Buy Sugar Crisp tomorrow. The Paradise Valley New Year's Eve square dance ends on a sour note when a sneak thief steals all the guns from the cloakroom. It is early the next morning in the Eureka Cafe, and evidently the guns were not all that was stolen. Of all the rotten, no-account things to do, that feller was the worst thief in the world. Now, Pat, you'll get Nellie Bell back. Well, I just hope so. I couldn't get along without her. She's the sweetest little jeep that ever was made. Why don't you get to work and take your mind off Nellie Bell? Roy will figure out who stole her. You know, I don't think we even ought to open up today. Well... Hey, the sheriff just gave me some mighty interesting information. Has he found Nellie Bell Roy? Did he locate the stolen guns? No, but he gave me a lead, so maybe we can. Where are we going, Roy? We're going to look for a fiddler, your friend, Floater Lee. Floater Lee? That nice old fella? Oh, he wouldn't have stolen the guns or Nellie Bell. Why, no, he couldn't have stolen the guns, Roy. He was playing right up there in front of everyone every minute while the deputy was out of the cloakroom. I know, but he could have had an accomplice. It turns out that Floater Lee's a mighty smart man. Well, I suppose we could look him up. Said he lives uh, way over at the south end of the valley. We're saddling up and heading to the north end, Pat. We're going to Boulder Canyon. Boulder Canyon? Well, the last time we were there... The last time we were there is when you bought a map to a lost gold mine. Yeah, and it led us into plenty of trouble with that darn old Corky Lewis fellow and that great big strong-arm man of his. But I don't see what that's got to do with Floater Lee. Well, the sheriff told me that Corky Lewis and his friend Louie made a jailbreak about five days ago. Now, Corky had a beard when we saw him before, but when you think of it, he and Floater were about the same size. Hey, that's right. And Corky was a fiddler. In fact, he bragged about how good he was. Yeah. Corky. Floater. I think that special introduction to the square dance last night was a signal that the coast was clear. And I've got a hunch that when we finish singing Old Lang Syne... The old fiddler and his partner took Nellie Bell and skipped with about $4,000 worth of guns. You mean uh, we were singing, should old acquaintance be forgot? And all the time our old acquaintance was old Corky Lewis? That's just what I think. And our old acquaintance may be gone, but he's certainly not forgot. Now let's saddle up as fast as we can and head for Boulder Canyon. Roy, I think we should have brought the sheriff and a posse. Maybe we should at that. Finding anyone in Boulder Canyon is like looking for a pearl button in a snowstorm. I didn't want the posse. Catching Corky is my own personal project. And somehow I think Corky's personal project is catching me. You figure Corky's going to show us where he is? Well, he didn't make any attempt to cover Nellie Bell's tracks driving here to the canyon. But they disappeared when we hit rock. You know, he'd better not have done anything to Nellie Bell. That's all I've got to say. What's that? It's Corky and his fiddle. He's up there in those rocks somewhere. Hey, look out. Look the horses quick. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, wow. It's Corky, all right, and he's got that strong arm partner of his with him. Well, he certainly must be strong to be able to shove these big rocks around like that. Say, we'd better find shelter right Move now. your horses yeah. now. We passed an overhang about 25 yards back. It'll be a fine place to leave Dale and the horses and bullet. Leave me? What are you talking about? Well, climbing around these rocks is no job for you, Dale. Hey, we'd better take Bullet with us, hadn't we, Roy? He's mighty good at tracking. Yes. Well, here we are. Woo, woo, trigger. Woo, woo, woo. See how that big ledge juts out? Stay under the overhang, Dale, and you'll be perfectly safe from fallen rocks. Fine. And I can see anyone who comes from either direction. No. Uh-oh. Corky's calling us again, Pat. Yeah, I just wish I'd hear Nellie Bell calling me. Say, Dale, take one of my guns as an extra. And if you need us, fire two shots. Don't worry about me, Roy. I'll be fine. Just remember, we're up against a mighty smart customer, and he's got a mighty tough partner. Come on, Pat, Bullet. Let's find that fiddling will of the wisp. <laughs> recognized that voice. Why, lady, this is the most welcome surprise I've had since I left the plantation. 
Why, I remember you from the dance last night. I'm Floater Lee. Sorry I can't say at your service, ma'am. Come off that Floater Lee stuff. You're Corky Lewis, and we both know it. Lady, you're so right. Looks like I'm caught up with it last. What's the matter? Uh, I thought Louie was the best friend. He threw this big boulder at me and pinned me down here and made off with all the guns we stole last night. Oh, please help me, little lady. I, I'm in terrible pain. Oh, he... Well? Oh, I'll, I'll confess again to Rogers, to, to the sheriff, to anyone, any time you say, but please help me out of here. I'm sure my leg's broke. I don't trust you. And I don't blame you. No, I've been a terrible man all my life. But you can see for yourself how, I, how I'm pinned down here. Well, I can't move that rock. I'd better signal Roy and Pat. They can free you. Sure, anything you say, little lady. Only won't you please see if you can't do something for the pain first. It's so bad. I shouldn't feel sorry for you, but... Well... I'll see what I can do. If, if you could just maybe get my, my little shoe off. My, my foot sticking out there and the ankle swelling up something fierce. Well, I'll try. Now. Good, good. If you only didn't have these laces knotted so tightly. Uh, I'll have to use both my hands. Oh, please treat me gentle, little lady. Oh, I wish I'd faint so I could stand the pain, but... Oh, well, Mr. Corky, I've got oh. it. Good boy, no, Louis. Uh, you can't grab your guns, lady. When big Louis got you, you stay put. Oh, you don't. Go ahead, kick me. I can't hardly feel it. Get the ropes around her, Louis, uh, and move this confounded boulder away from her leg. Sure, Mr. Corky. That stone don't hurt, does it? No, but I sure can't move. Listen, you may have tricked me again, Corky, but you didn't get away with it before, and you won't this time. Because as soon as Roy finds out... As soon as Rogers finds us, I'll take care of him, too. I've always wanted to leave him sealed up in one of my caves, and this time I'm going to do it. Hey, that fiddling. It's coming from the other side of this tunnel. Right. And it'd be an awful lot quicker to go through the tunnel than to climb up over this rock formation. Roy, look. Out there in the open at the other end, there's Nellie Bell. Sure enough. They must have driven her through the tunnel and parked her on the other side. Let's go get her. Now, wait a minute, Pat. Nellie Bell's parked close to what looks like a pretty steep cliff. If we get through the tunnel and then find we can't get out, it'd Whoa, be... Whoa, why couldn't we get out? There's daylight. There's bound to be a clear in there. Well, I guess you're right. I hate to just walk into a place where Corky Lewis has led us, but as long as it's open on the other side, well, let's go through the tunnel. But let's go with our guns drawn. Come along, Bullet, but be quiet. What was that, Roy? Cork and his friends are up to their old tricks. They sealed off the opening we used to get into this tunnel. Hurry before they do the same thing to the other end. Yeah, right, Roy. Only a couple more feet now. There we are. We're in the open. Oh, Nellie Bell, am I ever glad to see you. Are you all right, girl? Wait a minute, Pat. We're not in the open. We're in an opening. But there are sure 25-foot walls on three sides of us. <laughs> well, Rogers and Brady, I knew I could get you to come through that tunnel. All right, Corky. Let's see if you dare show yourself up there. Oh, yes, I dare show myself. I ain't afraid of your guns. Yeah, we got a direct beat on you, Corky. And with a sneak thief like you, maybe we wouldn't mind shooting. No, I wouldn't care if he did. I've had my fun out of life. But if my friend Louie here shots, I'm afraid he'll get awful mad at the little lady. What's that? Roy, do you suppose they got Dale? Of course we got Dale. You do just exactly as I say, or it'll go mighty hard with her. What if I don't believe you, Corky? Uh, bring the little lady, Louie. Hmm? Hold her up over the edge. If Roger's another guy trying anything funny, just toss her down. So hard she'll bounce. <laughs> Back to Roy in just a minute. But right now, let's hear from Handy, Dandy, and Candy, the three Sugar Crisp Bears. We're the Sugar Crisp Bears, and we want you to meet the grandest treat you ever did eat. Post Sugar Crisp. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp. Yes, those three Sugar Crisp Bears are so right. 
Post Sugar Crisp is a honey of a new cereal. It's already sweetened, so you don't need sugar. Just add milk or cream. And mother, Sugar Crisp is ideal for snacks when the youngsters are hungry between meals. Made of nourishing puffed wheat, coated with energy-rich honey and sugar. Or they can eat it just like candy right out of the box. Be sure to ask for genuine Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on it. Well, well, it got you in the well. What do we do, Roy? If we try to shoot, that big fellow will throw Dale right down here with us. I know that, Pat. We can't take a chance on using our guns. You got up mighty early this morning, but you can't get up early enough to outsmart Corky Lewis. Not twice, that is. I throw her down whenever you say, Mr. Corky. All right, Corky. What do you want us to do? First of all, toss your guns down somewhere. I can keep an eye on them. I don't trust you. Yeah, we don't trust you either. But Never mind for now, Pat. Do as he says. All right. Well, I really don't want to harm the girl. Louie... Take one last look at these two fellas, if you like. Mm. And I want you to start filling up this hole with boulders. Uh. What? Roy, he's going to start throwing boulders down here at us. And if we go back in the tunnel to keep from getting hit, it won't be no time at all until he's got this entrance plugged up, too. Well, there may be one way out, Pat. What is it? Keep an eye on me. I'm going to make a fast move, and when I do, grab a gun and cover Corky. Hey, hey, Rogers, what you doing with that rope? Oh, now, take it easy, Corky. I'm not going to risk having my dog hit by one of these boulders. I want him in the tunnel. All right, tie the confounded dog and take him in the tunnel. Happy smothering to all three of you. You don't have to lasso Bullet, Roy. He'll come when you call him. I'm not going to throw the rope on Bullet. I'm going to throw it up around me. Ah! Hey, Roy, you did it. You got the big lug right in the noose. Grab a gun, Pat. Fast. I'm going up. Roger, let's go that rope. Let's let me loose her up. Ah, you'll do nothing, Corky. I can shoot darn near as good as Roy. Mr. Corky, he's pulling himself right off the rocks with his rope. Throw the girl down, Louis. Like that. I'm roped to her. I'm coming up, Dale. Be there in a second. Keep those hands up, Corky. Louie, jump down there yourself. Oh, no, 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 Mr. Corky. Not even for you. I can hurt. There, now, Dale. We'll get that gag out of your mouth and get you out of this. I'll work my arms loose, Rogers. It's a good thing you're as big as you are, Louie. Mm. I couldn't have pulled myself up here in a smaller man. Uh. There, Dale. Wiggle out and help Pat cover Corky. You bet I will, Roy. He's the meanest little weasel. This time I punch you inside out. Oh, all right, try it. I'm still going to go for that stuff. Roy, be careful. If you go over the edge... Drive him back, Roy. You're too close. I'll drive him back. If I ever get hold of you, Rogers, I throw you down there like you'll a... never get a hold of me. You're too slow. Get in there and fight, Louie. He can't hurt us. His guard's down, Roy. If you can only reach his jaw. I can make it again, Dale, I think. There. Corky, the time you and Louis spent in jail must have softened him up. I think he was tougher the last time. Now, 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 look, Rogers. You and me ought to talk a little business. I'd still like a man like you on my staff. It's the same answer, Corky. And if you don't quit saying that, I'm liable to forget myself and throw one more punch. No, all right, all right. I didn't see any harm in asking. Roy, how are me and Nellie Bell and Bullet going to get out of here? Louie will wake up pretty soon, Pat, and we'll let him work some more. Yeah, we'll make him move the boulders away from the entrance to the tunnel. Then you can drive out. Well, the only thing is, I just looked in the gas tank and it's empty. Never mind that, Pat. First, we'll make Corky show us where he hid the guns he stole last night. Then we'll hitch Louie to Nellie Bell, cover him with all the artillery, and he can pull you back to Mineral City. It'll be a nice change from the rock pile he and Corky are going to be working on. Happy New Year, Corky. Happy New Year. That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us, Goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. The Roy Rogers Show was brought to you tonight by Post Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat. Fellows and girls, remember Roy's good advice and ask Mom to bring home Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on the front. You'll love Post Sugar Crisp. Come and get it. Come and get it. For quick two-minute energy for work and play, how about Grape Nuts Flakes? 
How about them? How about them? How about those grape nuts? How about those grape nuts? How about them? How about them? How about those grape nuts? They are so good, good for you too. They do many things that are energy worth for you. They so are so good, good for you too. They do many energy worth for you. So how about them? How about them? How about those grape nuts? How about them? How about them? How about those grape nuts? How about them? How about them? How about those grape nuts? How about them? How about them? How about those grape nuts? How about them? How about them? How about those grape nuts? How about them? How about them? How about those grape nuts? How about them? How about them? How about those grape nuts? How about them? How about them? How about those grape nuts? How about them? How about them? How about those grape nuts? How about them? How about them? How about those grape nuts? How about them? How about them? How about those grape nuts? How about them? How about them? How about those In the package with Roy Rogers and Trigger on the front. Featured in tonight's cast were Frank Hemingway, Jack Moyles, and Ben Weldon. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Post Sugar Crisp. Stay tuned for the latest news brought to you by Log Cabin Syrup.